So here's a review for the tweezer soldering iron which Banggood has generously sent me for free um, for purpose of review. So disclaimer, I didn't pay anything for this. Um, and promoting Banggood obviously because they've been generous and sending me stuff in order to get reviews done. So which is great. Um, so thank you Banggood. Now this iron um, comes with a little stand here. Get the thing out. Nicely packaged, I do like the packaging ones actually. Sometimes you buy things in a just like in a bag. <laughs> so having it in proper package is nice. So we've got a mount there, the sponge, of course. Um, feels quite sturdy actually. It's quite nice, it's got pads on the bottom there, so it doesn't slip. So that's alright. Uh, it's got the crit plug for my country, which is always nice. And I believe they've got different versions of this for different countries and um, control unit there with selectable Fahrenheit or degree C uh, so associated with Fahrenheit selection on off and temperature control so with a digital readout so it all looks nice enough little indicator there for the heater um, yeah that all looks nice enough there it's like a it's, I suppose you could say this is more of a portable solder station really um, you know, because you, you know, it makes it convenient to move around rather than having a big bulky base you have to deal with. So um, I can see some positives there. So let's just move this box out of the way. Right. So, uh, as I've mentioned in the mailbag, it's got Chinese at the front and uh, English at the back in the manual. So usual prerequisite safety rules and warnings about how to use it. You know, it gets hot kind of thing <laughs> it is a soldering iron it's meant to get hot uh, specs so here we go get me close for you so 120 watts rated um, 200 to 480 degrees C um, stability 2 degrees that's not bad is it um, operating temperature 40 degrees so I guess that's for the other components and got a sleep mode 10 minutes so after 10 minutes it'll go to sleep so uh, it's also a nice little safety feature or at least prolongs the um, tip life that sort of stuff uh, let's see high power heater tweezers parallel design we need to remove the electronic components you can use the parallel tweezers to heating components and well joints here or soldering on that's so just describing how to use it um, PID control. Magic temperature compensation speed. <laughs> Love the translation. Uh, but yeah, it looks like a, uh, a reasonable thing. Uh, 10 minutes fixed sleep function after 10 minutes without the use of iron. Automatically into sleep mode, energy and prolong the tip life, which is what I just said. So, cool. Um, it's not really a schematic, it's more of a parts diagram, isn't it, really? Anyway, um, so it's, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, power core, power switch, temperature control knob, blah, blah, blah. It's all pretty simple. Not exactly, uh, don't require a high IQ in order to use something like this, but looks of it. It's a pretty simple thing. Um, typical instructions in there. I'll show you the other page too, I suppose, in case you want to see it. How to clean it up. Placing tips. After use clean up. Parts replacement. Told you how to get the thing apart. Diagrams on how to pull it apart. Um, so that's actually quite detailed, you know, in, in that way. Usually you don't get kind of, you don't normally get that kind of information. Because, um, you know, some, unless you, you know, maybe higher in gear, maybe. But, um, yeah. Usually you get much less information than that on how to pull something apart. You have to figure it out as you go. Um, so it's got these tips here, which is like standard tips, but they're... What looks of that? Um, so they'll rotate around. Let's have a look. So, so yeah, it's so standard tips. Getting them out again. <laughs> also there's a lot 
they're obviously formed after they've been put into the into the sleeve there. Um, but obviously it means you can replace them. So if you can get some more long tips, um, then you can put them through there and, and reform them and replace them if you need to. So they are replaceable tips, which is good. Um, it's got a nice little feature there using standardized systems which are recognized. So you can also control how far out that comes out. So not there restricts the outwards movement. So um, if I want it in, so I'll just go that far, want a bit more, go that far. So if you're doing you know small stuff and you just want to keep it minimized, I don't know, there's probably a reason for that. Some people might use that. It's not something I expect to be using, but uh, yeah, I don't know, it's just, just getting the tips in the line because it's a little bit loose obviously, not tighten right down. Yeah, that's fine. So that should be nice. I mean, I've, I've wanted a, a tweezer iron for quite a while since I started doing SMD work, which is something I've delayed doing for quite a long time. So, um, I finally got one. I'm waffling a little bit, aren't I? That's not good. Okay, so, so established it's got replaceable tips, adjustable outward stroke, which could be handy if you if you need that for some reason. Let's get this untwisted and plug it in and see what comes up on the display. Okay, I've got it plugged in. It's powered up for the first time. See what happens. So I've set it at moderate range, degree C. Turn it on. Hopefully you can see the display a bit better. Hold on, let's just move this up here so you can see it. There you go, heat up time. Doesn't seem too bad actually, heat up time. There you go, it's topping out a little bit there. I guess the PID is kicking in. What temperature have I got to set to? I'm not sure. Probably It's about halfway, so it's probably um, about 280 degrees or something, roughly, I guess. So it can get up there quite rapidly, and then obviously as the PID control kicks in, it slows it down so it doesn't overshoot. And um, I can smell it warming up. <laughs> so as we brand new, you get the, the oils burning off it. Um, you go 323 degrees set to. So the PID control works nice and gently at least. Um, it's interesting how it drops immediately. Well, that's showing set point now. Okay. So I'll switch between set point and um, actual temperature. So that's a nice little feature actually. When once it's warmed up, it will actually just show you the set temperature, rather than what it's actually doing. So that's doing 480 degrees C down to 200 as per the spec. So that's pretty cool. Um, and if I switch it to Fahrenheit. Oh yeah, there we go, now it's switched to um, actual temperature. Okay, so automatic switches between them, that's a nice little detail. Um, so, as, as you change it, it will tell you what the temperature is set to, what, what you're setting the temperature to, and then it jumps and shows you the actual temperature. That's nice, I like that. Um, it's true, change it to Fahrenheit. Yeah, so. So set 392 Fahrenheit up to 896 Fahrenheit. It's okay. Yep, same deal. Jumps over. So yeah, it's a nice little control. Um, wire length, uh, it's about um, probably a meter on the mains cable that side, and probably about the same on the um, iron side. Now this is actually a silicon cable, but a feel of it. It feels like a silicon. It's nice and flexible. Um, it certainly um, feels good. I doubt that will burn. I should do a test, shouldn't I? This is a bit tight on here. Uh, I know it's when I put it in, it's a little bit tight. If you get the angle just right, it will go straight in. I might have to just relieve that very slightly to make it a bit of a looser fit. Um, let's do a burn test. Yep, nothing. Absolutely fine. So, that's alright. Um, so good. 
that looks nice. So it's just actually melts the solder wheel, shall we? I'll probably have to actually um, use this and put something together. Turn the tips. Make sure that both tips are actually on. Yep, they are. All good. So that looks good. Uh, supposed to be ESD safe as well. It's according to its specs and, and its markings on here. So it's obviously got grounded tips, um, which is always an important thing. Unless you're working on live gear. <laughs> I'll tell you a little story. Once I was working on a CB radio years ago. And I'd forgotten to turn the power off because sometimes I'll just turn, turn the main switch off the front, and that's okay because it disables most of the circuitry. And the bit of circuitry I was working on was fine. And um, one day I, I kind of worked on a bit of the circuitry, which, which was before the switch. And boom! Blew a big trace out of the circuit board because the ground, the iron was grounded, and I stuck it straight. I went bang, shorted it straight out. <laughs> I had to repair that anyway. Um, that was okay. That's all the damage did is burn a track out, but well, lots of smoke. And, anyway, so yes, ground, ground the tips are great as long as you actually be careful about what you're doing with the tips and um, aware of the circuitry you're working on, like you know, make sure it's actually definitely off. <laughs> but yeah, it's always a good thing to ground the tips because then you don't have those static issues or potentially um, high voltages on the tips, which could damage some parts which are sensitive to it. Um, so yeah, that looks very nice. Um, I should actually have to uh, try and assemble some parts with this. There you go, let's look at the back of this. There you go, so basic specs there. Standards. Yeah. No standards marked on the back. Which is interesting. Um but yeah that seems to work nicely. We shall do some actual practical testing in a sec. So I've had the iron off now for a couple of minutes and there's actually a lot of heat in this and that's still See, it's still molten there on those tips. See it? So this has got a huge heat capacity. Don't normally see it last that long. Um, what I did just notice though is that this ring here, when I was touching this to squeeze it, that ring here is actually getting quite hot. Um, that's like burning hot. I can't keep my finger on there. This bit here is warming on that edge, but um, that's okay. But if you're not paying proper attention, because it doesn't have much of a guard on the edge there, um, you could actually rest your finger on there, which is what I just did. I went to go and do this, and I was resting my finger like this. I was resting that on there, and I saw it's getting hot. So watch out for that. So you have to make sure you hold it a little bit further back, and I think you'll be fine. Um, just crack my finger. Um, but yeah, the um, just have to watch out for not sticking your finger on there. I mean, it does have a bit of a lip there, but um, just to be a bit aware about what you're doing. So I'll just lay this out here for the sake of photogenics. So <laughs> anyway, I'm going to try this piece here next. We'll see how we go. So something I've just done is I've actually just opened this up very slightly. This is just some bent metal here. All right, that's just folded around. And um, I'll show you that. Okay, so it's just bent there. So I just opened it up very slightly, just bent it very slightly, and um, not much at all. And this iron is now a, um, a nice sloppy fit. Which means it's easy to get in and out, which is more like what you want. All right, it's just it's just been closed up a little bit too much. I saw what's wrong with that. So that's all a bit easier to use now. So what I'm going to do. This is a, an old prototype board, um, which is no longer used. So I'm going to desolder these capacitors that are there and maybe those resistors. We'll see how we go. We'll give it a try. We only need quite small parts. Well, the 0603s and the um, So I shouldn't need a need a lot of heat we'll see how we go hopefully you can see the display okay there I mean heat at times not too bad but um, I would like to see it slightly faster but I'm guessing it says 120 watts which means it's probably 60 watts per side so I think that would probably be about right actually for the warm-up time I think that'd be in line. Um, so yeah, I mean they say they say 120 watts, but um, I've got that slide head of alignment now. I must have moved it. Hold on a second. I need to do something about that. It's a bit hard when it's already warmed up. Let's just turn this around. There we go. Right. 
gonna tighten these up a bit harder. Right, so it reckons it's up to 293 degrees. Um, sold on the tip is molten, so you can see there. Let's give it a go. Yep, straight off, no problem. And as well. You have to excuse my poor technique. <laughs> Hopefully, you got that on camera, it might have been blurry. I might have to do that again. Too busy looking at what I'm doing, I should look through the camera. Right, let's do it on this side. I'm having to hold it as well. I should probably do it differently, but anyway. So, there we go. I should put some fresh solder or something on this to help it, but uh, I'm being a bit lazy. I might increase the temperature very slightly. That is on a ground blowing that one. Um, that side there's a ground blowing. So it needs a bit more heat probably. I've got it quite low. Let's just put the temperature up slightly. Yeah. I normally run about 320 or so in most of the things I do. So let's just do that. Give it to the clean. This is a bit better, eh? Fresh solder. To using these things obviously because it's the first time I just got them, so and here we go, it's off. So it's, uh, I think I probably need to adjust these tip angles just for me. Um, so, what I think is that where the angles are kind of parallel, I feel like I need them to be angled in towards each other slightly more, so it's got like a, a pincher action more rather than a parallel movement. That's just what I feel that I need. Um, they're not perfectly aligned either. They're not been formed perfectly, but um, let's try and get this into focus again. All right, so they're not too bad, right? They're pretty parallel, but for me, I think I prefer them to be angled in very really slightly, so there's more of a gripping movement um, right at the very tip. It's just I don't know. I could be wrong in that, but this is what I, this is why I feel it needs to be. Um, now alignment-wise. If I'm gets to focus, hopefully, there's a little bit of slop in that bit there, so there is some movement in that tip. Um, I'll try and capture that somehow. See, so there's a little bit of sideways movement in there. I'll try and do that, burning my hand at the same time. All right, so see, there is some leeway. I've just Rubbed it on the side of the other one, so now I pushed it out of alignment. Um, yeah, so there's a bit of play in there. It's not a huge amount, but I think as long as you're not trying to twist it sideways at the time you're trying to use it, it's probably all right. And I need more to do with that. Um, I haven't got any other junk boards laying around I can show you on, unfortunately. But yeah, I mean, it seems to work okay. Um, obviously, a lot, a lot of that is me needing to get used to using it and. Um, and getting the temperature right for the, to set the iron, that sort of stuff. I haven't quite figured that bit out yet, obviously. You only just see me use it for the first time just then. So, I think it's okay. Um, it's one of the things I think you need to get used to using it. Um, to me at the moment, it's, it feels very foreign and weird. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it's just getting, it's cases getting used to using this gripping motion and um, holding it correctly and things like that. So. Um, and getting the right temperature settings and things like that. So I mean that that part there, the, the big ground plane, one one engine that resistor was on the ground plane. So um, it took a bit to get that melted. So I probably had temperature a bit too low for that particular job. Um, but yeah, uh, I have to say at least I've got one of these now. Which is there's been lots of times I wish I had a tweezer iron. <laughs> We've had like a larger part to try and desolder. Um, so at least now I do actually have one. So thank you very much, Banggood, for sending me this and. Uh, I think overall I'd say I'm impressed by the control unit, um, the way it does that detail there of showing you the set temperature and then switching to the actual. 
um, it's not just an actual temperature only it actually does tell you what you set to which is very nice um, accuracy now that's a good point can I check its accuracy probably I shall come back all right so I've got my Siglent 3065X um, set up here on temperature reading I've um, got a probe on here and we shall see what we get now I've got this currently set to 200 degrees so let's get it in the frame here you go 200 uh, nice round reference number makes it easy to extrapolate I suppose so let's stick the probe on there so that's saying 240 at the top there on that's one side do the other side 223 or so right so those tips are reading a bit higher than the actual set point if I go a bit closer to the base so if I go now into here instead that's reading about 200 so it could just be that the uh, transferred heat there is affecting it so obviously it's the sensors are in, in this part of the iron um, so closer to the sensors is more accurate isn't that in that case that no, maybe not maybe I'm wrong about that so it seems to be up by 30 degrees at 200 so let's just go a bit higher let's go to 300 degrees I'm not quite sure what effect this is actually going to have on the thermocouple itself just wait for it to stabilize it'll take a little while so it's supposed to be plus or minus two degrees from sensing but yeah, I don't think that's right um, all right, so it's sitting at 300 now. Let's give it some time for it to soak through. Try again. So that's sitting much closer on that side, but maybe it's still soaking through. Let's give it a minute. Got the window open because it's starting to get into summertime now, it's starting to get a bit warm. Unfortunately, I'm getting some passing traffic. All right, so that one there, 300 degrees, is actually looking pretty good. That's getting much closer. Um, try this side, Let's get a good connection on there. So that one's sitting a, a bit lower. So it looks like it's probably only sensing on one side of the iron. So that one's coming up a bit higher now. Oh, there we go, both of them there. So both are around there. So yeah, that's that's close. That's closer to 300 than it was at 200. Okay, let's do uh, 400 degrees. And again, after like wait for it to sit to um, settle down try to get exactly 400 there we go and uh, I'll pause this video a second okay so it's had a bit of soak time there for a minute or so so it should be enough let's uh, see what this does so again this is at 400 degrees So I'm mistaken of melting the, uh, the thermocouple tip. Oh, maybe not. Anyway. I'm not sure what the thermocouple is supposed to go up to, actually. But, um, it seems to be topping out about 325. Could be the thermocouple. Three fifty or so. So I'm not quite sure what the range is on this thermocouple. 70 if I get it there so I mean, yeah, I'm probably at a range on a the thermocouple 370 there and there we go getting up to 400 maybe it's still got a bit of soak time going on there trying to get it bedded in properly as well so yeah I mean it's it gets there I think it may be slightly underpowered but then it is only for SMD work so you only talk about really small components anyway so I don't think it's really an issue um, you know, 
if you've got a small component it's 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 nothing the thermal mass is tiny um so i don't think there's really a problem there um i think 60 watts on each iron side is probably adequate really for that kind of work it's not like you're trying to do, you know solder big chunky things it's probably for you know 0402s 0603s um 05s that sort of thing um you know 1206s certainly um so yeah and as you can see i've got a different meter now i've replaced the vici with the signet um robert tau tech um came to the party and gave me a hand and uh gave me a decent deal on this unit and uh I was wanting a six and a half digit unit for quite a while. Um, I've had a five and a half digit fluke, um, which has been fine up till recently. Then I need to do some more position, and I thought, oh, I need I need six and a half digits. So that's what I've got. So thanks, Rob, for sending me this and uh, doing me a decent deal on it. Much appreciated. Um, I still pay for it. It wasn't free, but um, you know, I, I got a discount, which is great. Uh, so I thought I'd better plug that up. Now, um, so the iron. Let's just swing this around again, hold on. Okay, so here's a Banggood page for the uh, soldering iron, so I thought I'd better show this to you. Um, as you can see, it's got different plug types, Australian, EU, UK, US, so um, I don't think there's examples here what the actual plugs are, but as you can see, this is the unit here. And um, here's the price, 75 New Zealand to... Uh, $80 in the end. I'm not quite sure why there's a range, but there is. And you've got different warehouses apparently or something. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's the iron. And here's all the description stuff here, which you saw before as well as I was going through it. And uh, so there you go. So remember to click on the link in the description. And um, if you're interested in these, I mean, this is pretty, pretty cheap for what it is. Compare that to some of the professional ones, which are you know many hundreds of dollars. Um, if you're a hobbyist or you just do a little bit of CSMD work occasionally, then this is certainly worth your while to uh, have a look at this. Um, my experience so far has been good. So, what's the opinion of this iron? Um, good, I like it. Um, don't forget to follow the links down in the description, and they'll go to tr the track links, and they go to Banggood. So, if you're interested in this item or any other items uh, from Banggood. Um, then use the links down below because they get allocated to me as a source and um, I actually get a credit on the site as well for anything you purchase it doesn't cost you any more but I get a little bit out of it um, in theory it's new so who knows but um, but certainly the track links helps because it means that, that uh, Banggood see that the traffic's coming from my channel to Banggood and helping them to get sales so it helps to make sure that I get more gear to review which gives you more videos to watch so win-win for everybody I think it's a great deal um, so again thanks to Banggood for sending me this for free um, for purpose of review and my opinion of the sign is it's it's good I, I like it um, I love the control unit here with its simplicity it's very simple control very easy to understand obvious what it does um, I, I, I do like that iron itself um, yeah okay it's not bad um, what I don't like is the fact the tips tend to rotate around but it's probably because I just haven't tightened them down tightly enough yet um, I probably need to get on there and just give them a nice good um, tighten up because it's got some flats on each side and nuts on here um, I don't know if you can see them so there's a flat there and, and there so we can actually get onto it a little spanner and just give it a tighten up it's probably what it needs um, and that'll probably resolve that issue anyway um, the stand that's nice and sturdy um, it feels nice and solid um, sponge, yeah, well, it's a sponge, you know. And it comes a nice little cap there if you want to transport it around, which is again, it could be a portable unit. It could easily be a portable unit. Um, now, as I'm new to this particular kind of iron, I've never had a tweezer iron before. It's a bit hard for me to judge exactly how it sits with things in comparison to other irons. Um, obviously, a part of what is me getting used to using it, and I found that a little bit awkward, but it's probably just because I'm not used to using a tweezer iron so um, but it was still successful I was able to get those parts off easy enough um, so I don't really think it's anything bad there I think it's just me getting used to using it um, there's a little bit of slop in there but again it's not much at all and I don't really think it's going to matter um, I, it's such a small amount I think if you're just squeezing it it's not really an issue 
Um, and I think it's a good good unit for the price. It was it was not that expensive. I, I have, we're going to have to go and have a look at the, what the price actually was because it eludes me right now. Um, follow the link in the description and that will tell you exactly how much it costs because it's right there. Um, so make sure you go and check that out. Um, I quite like it. I've always wanted to have a tweezer iron and um, this is a nice simple unit. Nice and small and compact. Not no, you know, no big bulky control unit, which is always a bit of a pain. So uh, this would be good for occasional use. Um, and it's say so, I, I like the control unit. It's nice and simple. Um, that is really nicely designed. I like that at all. I like that a lot. So this is a nice addition to my bench. So um, thanks a lot for watching the review, and thanks to Bangor for sending me the item. And make sure you go and follow those links down below and have a look around, and hopefully um, buy something. Catch you later.